Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? All right, so check this out. Today, I'm doing a follow-up video on this Dryden. Uh, the, the kind of review video for that should have posted by now. And so what I want to do in this one is just do a bunch of comparisons for you. Again, I don't want to be a review channel, right? So while I will do reviews, especially of watches like this that I love, then I more so want to be a helpful channel in the sense of saying, hey, if you're comparing one to another, it, 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 pros and cons to everything, right? So let's weigh those pros and cons. This Gen 1, which is the blue white, and this, I love this blue white watch. I wear it every 4th of July to celebrate Independence Day. And if you go back to that old video, then you would have seen it on my wrist when I did the kickoff of this channel. Here is the blue vintage. So you'll notice it has like the vintage style moon on it. One difference I forgot to mention in the review video is the the date or no date. The Gen 1 has the date. You'll see it right down here at the 430, right? You see a place there? The Gen 2 does not have the date. So he cleaned up the dial right here at the 430 and there's no date complication. So depending on if you, again, there's pros and cons to everything. If you like a date, you don't like a date, then there's something to consider. All right, check this out. So this on the left is the Ventus North Star. So that is kind of a sister brand to Zelos, which you know I'm a huge, huge fan of. And this Ventus is, it's a brass case, and then it's got this stunning green dial with like gold uh, indices and hands. And so you can just see that shimmer. The date at the bottom is not misaligned. I think it's getting ready to date change. And this thing wasn't running. I just picked it up. So don't let that throw you off. Very different shades of green. And that's the reason why I wanted to, sh to share this. Now, I will say that the green in the brass case versus the um, stainless steel case does make a little bit of a difference of the way that it wears. So right here, you'll notice that this Ventus North Star is more of an olive green. And the Dryden is a much deeper, darker green. Um, even though both do have some shimmer and, some, and the subdials of the Dryden does have the sunburst effect, um, but it really is a much deeper, darker green. So there's, when you're trying to compare, you know, when I really hit it in the light, it brightens up. And then when I go out, see how it gets a little bit darker. So, and then compared to the olive green on this, different shades, both beautiful, both beautiful, but, but slightly different. This is going to be familiar to many of you. That's right. The Green Alpinist, the Sarb 017. And so you can see here, even the Sarb 017 with the depth of green that it has, if I can get that in that light, right? This Dryden is an even deeper, darker green. And so you just kind of have that depth. Now you still have the shimmer, right? Um, on those sub dials, but the actual it's and, and the dial itself is kind of gloss. I wouldn't say that it's a matte green dial, but it in the right in the right light, meaning a more of a dark light, it'll almost look black. It kind of gives you the same effect that like um, you know they have the Kermit and the Hulk from the Rolex lineup, right? It almost kind of looks more like the Kermit, where you've got that black and green mix. So. But anyway, there's that. So we've got some green stuff there. Let's stack those up. Now, the next ones I want to talk about are options in chronographs. And there's a bunch of them. We talked before about how this has the VK63, um, which is the Seiko Mecha Quartz movement, um, which is a fantastic movement, by the way. If you're one of those people that only loves automatic watches, then you may not appreciate the Mecha Quartz for what it is. Um, but if you just appreciate chronographs for what they are, then you've got a couple of options. In the Mecha Quartz lineup, right, these are very commonly used, not just by in Seiko, but by other micro brands. Here's the Dan Henry, for example. It has the Mecha Quartz in it. And so there's a couple of examples. You'll also notice the, the size disparity there right so if you have a smaller wrist you might be more inclined to something like the dan henry to where if you have a slightly medium to large
larger wrist, you might be interested in the Dryden. Now, um, old school, right? We're talking about Seiko movements. This is a Seiko chronograph. This was my watch in college. And so one of these days I will get around to doing my history with watches. And I, this isn't like a Mecca Quartz, I don't think. I don't even know if the chroma function works on it. Oh, it does. And it's got a semi-smooth tick. So this might be the same type of movement. But look at that. All right, so let's see. Oh, that, no. Oh, there we go. And it's not a snapback, it's a turn. So that's interesting. So anyway, this is this was my watch in college and I still have it, of course, like many of us watch addicts do, um, you know, and yeah, this one actually went to the Seiko Service Center, which was a huge lesson learned and I do not recommend them whatsoever, but I'll do another video on that one day. Anyway, so this is a old school Seiko and I'm guessing it's a iteration or a new version of this uh, movement that might be in this drive over here or, or what created the mecha quartz. But if you are a bigger uh, Seiko nerd or a, a researcher on all things knowledgeable regarding the Seiko chronograph movements, then I'd love to know that. Drop it down in the comments, please. Now, a couple of other options we have, like here's the Zelos. This is the black dial. And it's funny, look at when I put the Dryden next to that black dial, how green the Dryden now looks. Color theory is absolute, and the visual effects of it, I guess I should say, the psychological and visual effects of color uh, theory is absolutely amazing to me. So yeah, this is black. You now see how green that is. When I was putting it up next to the green ones, the Dryden looked kind of black. But anyway, this is titanium by the way, the Zelos is titanium. And this of course comes on the, the titanium bracelet. I've got another one over here. I can do a weight comparison between it and on leather and the dried on leather to get, let you know. But um, you'll see here, now the trick with the Zelos is one, you can't find them all sold out. And two, um, they're a lot more expensive. The Zelos does have two options though. You can get it in both the Mecha Quartz and in the automatic. Um, my two that I have right now are Mecha Quartz and I have a custom one of one build that Elshin is doing for me that I should be getting in the near future. That is with the Valjoux 7750 movement. Uh, so an automatic chronograph to kind of expand that part of the collection. But anyway, so there's that. Now let's do it. I, I measured let me move this out of the way. I got my scale over here to the right. You can't really see it. But I measured the green dried a little bit ago. And let's give it a set. And it came up at 82, 83 grams. Again, maybe depending on how the wind blows. Now I will say my strap on this Zelo. So what I'm looking at here, I think this is the ZX3 Meteorite Mecha Quartz Chronograph right like a quartz chronograph um, on this leather the hornween leather strap on the zelos is probably thicker and heavier than this one on the dryden um, even though the dryden's is a little bit softer and comfortable but just for weight comparisons we had 83 on that and we're at 87 on the zelos and so you can see there that man maybe i gotta look it up does the dryden does somebody know does the dryden have a titanium case and i'm just not familiar otherwise he has the stainless steel case weighing in at right at or just under the same weight as these titanium cases do from Zelos. Because um, I know the Zelos is titanium. And so, uh, yeah, that's interesting. But here's another side by side. For any of you that do have the Zelos photograph, you can see that the Zelos almost has a little bit more wrist presence. Um, just because of the way that it sits, it's also maybe a little bit thicker, maybe. Oh, no, I'd have to do a detailed comparison of that, which I'm not going to do right now. But there you go. All right. So you got lots of options. The other ones that I just want to throw out there for you are um, in, in the quartz category. So again, if you're going to go with something like this, the Mega Quartz is probably one of the most popular and common options. The other most popular one is the Valjoux movement, right? So the automatic value chronograph, they're, they're more expensive, but that's an option too. And they're pretty popular. Now you also have just some other kind of Swiss ones. And I don't know necessarily what movement is in this, 
but you've got this Victorinox with, it's a quartz, and uh, but you can see here, it too, it takes one per second, and it has a sub-second count, it has a flyback, so um, reset. So there's that, let me see if I can get another one, I'll get another. So this is another Victorinox, and it'll have the same, let me just start that up. You can see the same thing, ticking on the seconds, the sub-second register is zooming around, and then let's see, it'll do snapback. Yep. So, um, so you do have other options out there in the quartz category, depending on you know if you if you if you're scared of doing the micro brand thing, which I would not be, especially with this Dryden. You know, if you're going to be scared, be scared of some of the stuff you see on Kickstarter and whatnot. But don't I wouldn't be scared of, of this one, um, not a Dryden. So, and then the other one here. So this is Swatch. This is Swiss as well, and Swatch Chronograph, you'll know it's a quartz. Let's get it started here. You'll see similar to the Victorinox, it ticks by the second. Let me start the Dryden over here, just so you can see the comparison in the two hands. See the difference between ticking several times per second to give it more of a sweeping motion than the one tick. And so let's stop that. Boom, and you'll all see it, it smooth back. And that one's not aligned. And and just so you all know, I won't do it in this video, but I'll do it in the one. If it's misaligned like this on the reset, you can fix that. There's, it's a weird step of pressing a bunch of buttons in a certain fashion, and it will allow you to reset that. I actually had to call Victorinox customer support and do that on one of the two uh, Victorinox that I just showed you. And so I, I'm sure there's a way to do that here with the swatch as well. And with the Dryden, you kind of don't have to worry about it because you just hit it and boom, it goes back. And that's probably because Jerry's QC and everything that he does is, is top notch. Now the last one I want to show you, and I think these might be a little less common. This is a hand wind option. And they're most commonly found in the, in the Seagull 1963 chronograph watches and all of the variants that people make of Siegel that may not be actually Siegel's. That's a whole controversial topic we can do. We'll talk about another day. But notice the beauty of that hand wine case back. This is the, this is made by Perpetual Watch. And let me get it started. Boom. You'll notice too that like the Dryden, let me get them both going. It has a several tick per second sweeping kind of hand to it. But the difference here is that one, the Mega Quartz, of course, is going to run on a battery. It's going to keep running. The one on the left, you got to hand wind it every day, every other day. You know, it probably has probably a 40 hour power reserve. So you will have to wind that. But you do get a similar effect out here, even though these are two completely different styles of watch. And let me go ahead and pop that and hit it, and you see that it fly, it snaps back, fly back, whatever that's called, um, versus the whole sweep reset. Same thing with trying here, boom, boom, right back to normal. So anyway, those are your options. You know, you got Mecha Quartz, you got Hand Wine, you got the Valjou. Um, you have whatever other Quartz options are out there in some of like the Swiss options, Victorinox and Swatch, and that's it. I hope this was helpful. Um, Again, I'll remind you, I'm not getting paid by Jerry. I didn't get any watches for free. I mean, technically this is on tour, but I don't get to keep it. I, it's a loaner. And in fact, if nothing else, I'm gonna end up going and buying one of these now. So doing this review, not only did I not make money, I'm about to spend money. How about that? That's Watch Addict for life. Anyway, these drawings are amazing. I'd highly recommend checking them out and support Jerry and everything that he's got going on, the micro brand space and the watch community as a whole. So with that, we'll end it. Until we talk again, please remember what really matters. And that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane, my friend.